Project 2025 and the alt-right movement, the alt-right takeover of America that's, I believe, just about ready to happen. Um, I predicted this years ago, and uh, not unique to me or anything else. I learned it from others, but um, the whole point is uh, studying in, when you're a Christian, you have to study not only the scriptures, but also um, just history and things like that. And, um, you know, Paul wrote to Timothy and he said, Till I come, give attendance to reading. Um, and certainly reading the scriptures is the most important thing. But there are also less lessons that you can learn from history so that you don't make those same mistakes or that you understand what's about to happen. Let me say it that way. And um, <clears throat> the reality of this world that a lot of people don't seem to want to accept is that there are wars and that there's, you know, the book of Ecclesiastes talks about a time for peace and a time for war, a time to, um, you know, uh, help people, a time to, you know, time to kill or whatever. I can't think of the verse right now. It's not one I have memorized, mm -hmm. but um, it's in the book of Ecclesiastes. And that's just reality. Again, it's not a matter of, well, you're promoting this and you're saying that you want to kill people or something. No, I'm simply saying that that's reality. All right. Um, you know, my driveway here uh, that I'm walking on currently, when I first bought this property, it was in pretty good shape. Well, that was um, seven years ago. And all the different winters and the spring thaw and everything else and it starts to get you know rutted a little bit and i get some potholes in it and things um well i shouldn't complain about that because the second law of thermodynamics everything breaks down the law of entropy it all breaks down unless you inject energy into it and you know be it money or you know whatever paint for your house fuel for your vehicle change the oil in your vehicle that's just the way that it is. And every society goes through this. Every society goes through a time where they have a prosperous time and then it messes up the people and the people change and, you know, new regimes come in, uh, people are conquered, uh, lands are taken, lands are retaken. Uh, it's just the way that it is. And um, right now we have a regime change that's happening here in America. Um, anybody that's lived longer than, you know, 20 years or so, um, maybe even 10 years, anybody that's, you know, well, I mean, even my son, he's nine years old. He's seen the world change. He's seen this country change. Um, there are things that he sees now that, that weren't there back when he was born, back when he was just a, a young little boy. Um, there's places we don't go to anymore that we used to go to. And he's seen these changes. Again, it's part of life. Uh, you can't just say, oh, this is a bad thing and whatever, and, and I can't handle it. Or You have to respond to the changes. Um, that's why the church of Jesus Christ, you go through the book of Acts, chapter 2, there's not one time when any Christian ever built a building and called it a church. The church of Jesus Christ is meant to be flexible. It's meant to meet in homes, meet in uh, fields, meet out in the forest, meet anywhere. And, you know, for a while, Christians were meeting in buildings because they picked it up from pagan practices and things like that and, and the Jewish synagogue concept and, and whatever, and people would meet in those buildings. And then the time came that they weren't meeting that way anymore. And, you know, now we're getting into that. So a lot of Christians are realizing, hey, there's no scripture for this church building thing, and they're getting out of it. Uh, and there's issues with church buildings. Saw that during the pandemic. So my point is, change is inevitable. Change happens. There are some things, Luther, come here, come. Hearing something across the road, I think it's a deer over there. It's, they do this little kind of a weird, you know, um, I don't know what you call it, grunt or something, like that. And uh, I'm hearing that across the road and Luther's kind of barking at it. I don't want him to try to take on a, a deer that's a lot bigger. <laughs> um, but 
the challenges of trying to do a video when I have a dog walking around. But getting back to what I'm saying, the changes that are happening in this country, um, you know, it's distressing because it's something that, you know, we are creatures of, of habit and we get to the point where we're, we're comfortable with our life and we don't really want things to change. I mean, that's the whole point of you work so that you can provide things for yourself to make yourself comfortable. You want a nice comfortable chair when you come home from work. You want a nice comfortable place to live. You like foods that, uh, that are enjoyable to you. Um, and now other people try to take that away uh, from you or change that and you're not okay with those changes, it leads to the desire for war. That's how it is. And uh, did the live stream yesterday on the whole thing of this quote unquote assassination attempt on um, Donald Trump and people are, are analyzing it as we should. We shouldn't just believe whatever the media tells us. And we should say, where was the secret service at? Why did they do this? I don't understand what, what happened here and, and what's with this situation here and this thing here. Let me grab the gate here and open it. Um, I don't understand. This doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, why was there a ladder going up to the building where this guy did the shooting? It's kind of weird. Um, why were there eyewitnesses that were saying there's a guy on the roof with a gun right, right over there? Hey, there's a guy on the roof with a gun, uh, do something and the police are, oh, what, huh? You know, and I keep thinking about this thing. Okay. The guy shot at Trump with an AR-15. Okay, accuracy-wise, they're, they're okay. They're not bad. Um, certainly well within the range of that firearm. Um, I've been a gun guy all my life. I understand guns. I've studied guns and, and everything. Um, but I want you to think about something. Right here is the bullet that was used. Or not the bullet that was used, but the caliber, the type of bullet that's used. I can't get it to focus on that thing. All that great. Okay, this is a 5.56, five, um, just a regular full metal jacket. <clears throat> okay, it's a full metal jacket, just basically means if you don't understand that it's got this copper layer of copper over top of lead. It's a metal jacket that covers the full bullet. Okay, <clears throat> and it's designed that it goes into a uh, target, so to speak. And the copper jacketing will come off and the lead inside when it hits it will bend the copper is harder than the lead inside and it will it will deform into sort of a mushroom shape and it will enter in as this little bullet coming in and it'll come out as a larger you know it'll smash out more into kind of a larger mushroom shape <clears throat> now obviously scientifically speaking here think about this your ear is very thin. So this copper jacketing, if it encounters the ear, the ear is not enough um, weight or strength, we'll say, to smash that copper jacketing on there. So it would punch right through that. But that's pretty big, okay? For that to go through there, it would leave a pretty sizable hole, I would think. All right, and again, how do you get the bullet to go through, you know, see, if I have my head straight like this, the bullet comes, it would just kind of, you know, hit my ear like this and kind of glance, which you say, well, that's what happened. Yeah, okay, maybe, but just the, the probability of this thing happening um, is very slim, okay? I mean, you know, you know what I'm saying here, okay? Like that. I question it. I still kind of think that it could have been either a faked blood capsule, you know, and or uh, you know, some kind of like a little Hollywood prop or something. I mean, they do this stuff in Hollywood all the time. Donald Trump has been involved with Hollywood. He's an actor. He's been involved with the the world wrestling thing and whatever else. Um, I'm still from the old school thing where we called it the World Wrestling Federation (WWF). That's how I grew up hearing it. I actually used to go to the wrestling events and things. <clears throat> so
saw Andre the, Andre the Giant and Hulk Hogan and all the old guys like that. Um, but they can take a blood capsule and if, again, another way to scientifically consider something. How would you have done it? If you were going to fake it, how would you have faked it? Think about it that way. Well, he's going like this, and I saw more of the video, and Trump's pointing over in the direction of the guy. Pointing like this. And, again, look at wrestling. Wrestling cues. They'll point to certain people, and they'll do certain things, and whatever, and they say certain speeches. You know, the wrestler would come out, and he'd do things, and, you know, it's good to be here in, you know, Austin, Texas, and blah, 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 and they get the crowd all going up. That's their job. That's what they're supposed to do. Actors are doing the same thing, but through film. They aren't doing it live. So this performance thing, you could, if I was to do it, hey, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be standing here at the podium, and when I point to you, then you shoot. Don't shoot me, obviously, but shoot near me or around or above my head, and then shoot into the crowd or something to make it look legitimate. And then I'm going to go like this. I have a blood capsule that I can take out of my put my, you know, take my hand or whatever else and get this thing in my hand, have it there on the podium or someplace I can just slip it into my hand. And then I go like that and I smash it into the side of my ear and it, like this, and I go, and I drop down and I put my head like this so that it runs down over my face, you know, boom. Is that possible? I would say yes. Would it be possible to go down and to take a little blade and go like this quick and just cut it and like that, so it's really bleeding bad. Also a possibility. Um, again, it's, you know, the, I mentioned Mick Foley because people compare me to Mick Foley. I can sort of understand that. Uh, but, um, you know, he had a, an accident with wrestling and it cut the top of his ear off. Uh, he was wrestling, and I think they got him between the ropes or something, if I remember, and the top of his ear got severed. So, you say, what's your point, brother? My point is, there's a lot of fake stuff going on. Why? Because a new agenda is coming. Change is coming. Yeah, I think about the old hymn. Um, Change and decay in all around I see. O oh, thou who changest not, abide with me. Uh, that's why it's so good to have the word of God and to say, I don't need it to change. <laughs> I'm okay with the King James Bible where it's at. Uh, no, thank you. Well, it needs to be updated. No, not really. I like it where it is. Um, that's the relationship that a, a real Christian has with the Lord. We don't need to see change. Uh, we see enough of it in the world. <laughs> Um, but this Project 2025, Donald Trump coming in, I mean, they're, if this, if too much comes out about it, that it was fake and whatever else, I mean, in my opinion, they're committed right now. Trump is a very charismatic man. You can see what he did with the crowd, you know, he got, after this whole thing happened, he puts his hand up, fight, 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 you know, um, just like you would do in professional wrestling. Gets the crowd really excited. The crowd gets all, uh, you know, people, they're going, USA, USA. Well, think about that for a minute. Just think about this logically. Again, divorce emotion from it. Just look at this thing logically. You're in a scientific lab. It's in a test tube or a little flask or something, and you analyze it, all right? Why would they chant USA? <laughs> Uh, was it Putin? Like the one guy wrote in the comments? Putin must have done it. You know, was it Putin or a Russian agent that attacked Donald Trump? And it was a, therefore an attack on, the, on America? Uh, no, it was an American citizen. Supposedly, a 20-year-old young man that was there. And, and uh, they probably told him, you know, just do this thing and we'll capture you or whatever else. And they just killed the guy. I don't know how the whole thing worked out. I have no idea. You can you know, take guesses at that, but, you know, uh, why did they chant USA? It doesn't make any sense, because you see, that's what this whole thing is about. Again, patriotism. I, I'm for nationalism, don't get me wrong, but patriotism can be used to stir up people of, of uh, oftentimes very low IQ, 
to do very stupid things and to act in very stupid ways. Just saying. So, um, but this Project 2025 thing that people are all excited about and whatever, people told me, you know, look it up, and I, I looked into it a little bit. And, you know, there's things in there that are appealing to conservative right-wing leaning people. Things that you can look at and you say, oh, that would actually be a good thing if they would do this. Um, what's about to happen? Change. Okay, that's the whole point of this video. Um, the alt-right conservative movement is going to come to pass. And I believe ultimately that this, I said about it a little bit yesterday, and I'm still going to have to do a sermon on this in the future. We're still kind of working this thing out, how it all works. Um, but there are two different New World Orders. And that's why Putin came out and said about, you know, we need to have a new New World Order. Well, he means a Eastern New World Order to combat the Western New World Order. And there are times that the East and the West can kind of get along. There are times that the East and the West don't get along. And those times lead to war. And um, again, war is a purging kind of a thing. It's something that um, nations have done historically. Again, just documented facts here. Nations have done this historically as a way to um, get their country restarted. Okay, the economy has to crash. The economy has to be rebuilt. Um, you know, right now, you can see these trees here along my driveway, right here that I'm pointing to. They're going to need to be trimmed. You know, it's nice to see some uh, birch trees. That's what this is. This is birch here. And it's nice to see them growing here by the the driveway and they can grow and they can get to be big trees and give us more shade and, and things but then I'm not going to get the red raspberries that I used to get and I you know if the, the fields here eventually grow in then it's going to be a forest and then there will be no more fireweed and there will be you know it's change change um that's what I'm saying and uh there are certain changes that we can be okay with we can say okay I accept that I understand that and there are certain changes that we should fight against. And we should say, no, I'm not okay with that. Um, I'm okay with a alt-right system coming in that speaks, uh, or that would go against a lot of this liberal stuff. I'm okay with that. I really am. But I'm not okay with the alt-right coming in and forcing... Roman Catholicism to be the only true faith that can be practiced. Or, um, you know, some other thing like that. Um, the Jesuits coming to power and saying, you can't use the King James Bible anymore. Um, <clears throat> I'm not okay with that. Uh, again, as a Christian, you have to look at things that are changing. Um, <clears throat> it used to be that we could pay by check, paper check. Oh no, it has to be online now. Well, online transactions are not secure. I'd rather not do that. Oh, well, sir, that's just the way it is. We've just made these changes and you can't say anything about it. Well, then perhaps I'll go someplace else. And, you know, and I think ultimately the catching up of the body of Christ will happen when uh, there's too many changes for us to put up with. And we just need to say, okay, Lord, uh, what am I going to do here? <laughs> we need to go. But um, the Lord could you know, make some things happen that we might be here for a few more years. I don't know. There's some big changes coming. Luther, come. Come on. Come on, boy. His hearing only works once in a while. Luther, come on. There he comes. So, I'll quit ranting for now. I uh, just wanted to talk a little bit more about this. I'm sure there will be more details that will come out. More things will be seen and shown and whatever else. And, oh, now this person and, you know. And, again, it's the same thing. Every time that they do, there's a uh, false flag type of event. They always have experts that come out. And this guy was the boy's classmate and, and friend after high school. And he knows that why he did this. And 
he was always a little disturbed, always a little weird, and you know, they, they always do this thing. It's the same thing. So, um, be careful that you don't let your emotions get swayed over false type of things that will cause you to change in a way that's negative, change in a way that goes against uh, Bible-believing Christianity and the liberty that the Lord gives us. Um, don't let them change you in that area. So, that's my advice. And um, let me know what you think down in the comments section, of course. I like to read people's comments as much as I can. I can't always reply to them. Um, but uh, I do my best to get to looking at the different comments. So, that will be it. Thank you to everybody that's been subscribing recently. Um, it's nice to see the channel grow like that. I don't want it to ever grow at the, you know, because I compromise on the truth or anything. But um, I see people looking for answers, and I'm, I've tried my best since 2008 to put out answers on this on YouTube. I wasn't really putting out too many videos until about 2009, 2010, but um, I've been on YouTube for a long time trying to get the truth out to people. Um, I could have had a church building and had a nice little social club there and whatever else, but uh, I had, I was selling DVDs early on in 2007 before I was on YouTube. I was selling DVDs. If you don't know my story, if you're newly watching here, um, and I realized, you know, I'm reaching people, but it would be better to just use an online platform. I can put the videos out quicker that way and get a lot more information out there to people and then anybody can watch and um, it's free. You can watch all my stuff for free. And uh, so, but that'll be it. Um, so we'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, like I said, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below.